What's going on, everybody? Welcome in to the Monday, March 18th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy Newsbeat Stand-Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, California. We need, quote, another hundred billion for the high-speed rail. In the words of Stu, what is a few billion between friends? Unbelievable. <laughs> Next up, net zero climate goals will slide to 2060 or later as transition investments fail to pay off. Bain and Co. survey <clears throat> says. Got to love that. Next up, Biden's budget, a continued attack on reliable energy and freedom. The cover art on this one is absolutely unbelievable. It's a black hole of money um next up pennsylvania governor unveils plan to cut greenhouse gases boost renewables in the bit one of the larger inner producing states on the east coast uh we'll dive into all of that he'll then toss it over to me i will quickly cover what's going on in the oil and gas finance markets and then talk about what happened to rig count some super interesting stuff there and then probably peruse a little bit there's there's not much going on in the oil and gas business right now so that probably means something's up so we'll dive into all of that and a bag of chips guys as always i'm michael tanner joined by Stuart turley where do you want to begin hey let's start with our buddy newsome California, we need another billion for high speed rail. This is a hundred billion, hundred billion. Thank you. This is absolutely a disaster. Uh, and have you ever seen the comedian Ron White? Yes. Uh, it, billion is the way he would say it. Yeah. Um, and we need a coupon in order to go ahead and get to this ticket. Um, hey, this is absolutely abysmal. Let me read you just a couple things here. Uh, California High Speed admitted the project cost had ballooned to $98 billion. Uh, flash forward a couple years to today, a couple years, and they need another hundred billion. And then we have a video here in a, 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 a second, but let me give you a quote. Economic headwinds, really? I'd say a brick wall. Um, and, and so anyway, I'm going to tee up this video. It's a minute, I believe it's a minute seven. And Michael, you just saw the video. What are your thoughts on this before we tee it up for our podcast listeners? I think the only way to the only way to see it is, is just watch it. So we'll we'll give our take after. Okay, here we go. Well, said they're concerned. Right now, the the air is being sucked out of the room, funding wise, by this one project. How do we get the public on board with something that has this much of a downside to it? Funding wise, I think the only way you get the public is by performing better. And I think the authority is performing better today than it was. And I think it will going forward. I think it's the right thing to do for the future of the state and the country. And it, yes, it's a challenge. And just like when I worked on the Bay Bridge years ago and you're stuck in the middle of a very tough project, it feels impossible uh, until it's not. And then you just grind, you do the work, you perform better, you deliver. And, and, as, and you're right, we got to get this middle section done. We got to get this middle section done. We are on a better path today on it than when I started. And I believe it will get done. And then I hope we have the wherewithal to do San Francisco to LA in three hours, because that's what this project can do. Now, the High Speed Rail Authority is also hoping to have a solid federal partner on this project. But for some context there, President Joe Biden has been supportive of this project. When former President Donald Trump was in office, his administration tried to claw back funds for it. So I mean, <laughs> there's a couple things in there that's hilarious. One is the same guy in the speech. He's talking about when I was leading the, the Bay Bridge construction. Oh, the, 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 the Golden Gate Bridge construction, notoriously all, over budget. And off schedule. And we've got the same when when I was in the middle of it. I mean, it's it's the blind leading the blind up here. What I, I mean, you have to also remember this started out as a $33 billion project. Still a huge number, but not that big. It's now two, over 200 billion they think they need. They got a measly 3.5 from the Obama administration and then immediately grew to 42 billion. I mean, the problem is. What's hilarious is this is kicking Biden in the shorts because it's all inflation. 
Oh, it's worse than that. It's graft. And I guarantee you there was graft on the bridge. And this is uh, accusations of graft. I don't have a fact. Um, and the other one is, I love his quote, Michael. It's a disaster until it's not. <laughs> <laughs> The that, next thing, that, the I'm going to start using that excuse. It's a disaster till it's not. The last thing that's in here is uh, the news anchor for that, that show, uh, TV show in California says, uh, oh, by the way, they need a real friend in the White House because the U.S. taxpayers are going to pay this billion and they and they show a picture of Biden like they do on Gutfeld, yeah. you know, boom, here's this this friend of the project. And then they go the previous president. Boom, here's Trump. And it goes, he's not so much a friend of the project. I mean, it's 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 <laughs> so let's go to the next story. But you got to I mean, you got to read the whole article on Newsbeat, Energy Newsbeat dot com. Uh, hey, let's go to net zero climate goal will slide to 2060 or later as transition investments fail to pay off. Bain and co survey says, Michael, there are two key bullet points I want to read here right now. Confidence is eroding. <laughs> As the percentage of executives presented pre predicting net zero by 2060 instead of 2050 rise 62% from 54% a year ago, customers' reluctance to pay higher prices, and I'm going to go because they can't, uh, scaling up transition oriented businesses, especially amid high interest rates, respondents say, holy smokes, Batman. The rest of this article is pretty uh, nuts, Michael. Well, wh what's funny is, you know, the, there, there's always this, the, the signal and then there's the noise. What have we been hearing for the past five years? Everybody you know, we're net zero by 2030, 2035. We're close. We just need to do a little more wind, a little more solar. Yet if you actually, if you actually, um, you know, survey people and survey executives. Now they're in the oil and gas, utilities, chemicals, mining, and agriculture business. But you also have to remember, those are the people that are in the energy space. So they should be investing in whatever is going to make them profits. Last year, it was 54%. This year, it's 62 So even last year, half oh, yeah. of the energy sector didn't think we were going to get to 25th, make it by 2050. Then why are they trying to shove 2030 and 2035 down our throats? That's just what, you know, I say this all the time. What the, the hand says over here, what the other hand is really trying to say, because they're off by a scale of 30. I mean, we we covered at nauseum what's, what's going on. Um, um, at Michael, top 26, I... seven, eight, everybody was saying 2030, 2035. Yet the people in the energy business think it's 2060 now. And, and I, I, I can't read, I, this, this article's missing, uh, Bain, the Bain survey. I'm not sure if it's Mr. Bain, uh, or, um, uh... Hey, I got to do my Bain uh, imitation from Batman. Well, it's right here. Here's the quote. Joe Scalisi, head of Bain's energy oh. and natural resource practice based in San Francisco. He says this quote, clearly, the longer the executives are at the front lines of the energy transition, the I more sober reading. they are getting about the transitional practical realities. And this dude's in San Francisco. So, you know, oh. he didn't really want to say that. Oh, and he's probably got 10 percent. I wonder if he's the big guy. He may have gotten 10%. <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty unbelievable. You know, um, another one of their leaders over there, you know, one of the other quotes that came out, this guy's based in Washington, though. The direct impact of higher interest rates on the cost of transition projects is one of the most important stories yep. of 2023 and is likely shaping executives' perspective on the challenges associated with customers' willingness to pay. Uh, have we thought about uh, inflation? We thought of you know it's just interest rates. Well, why are interest rates high? Oh, well, yeah, it's really because we have printed money for the past twenty years, and we were at the forefront of recommending the Fed do that. Here's another one, Michael. Oil giant. We covered this earlier in last week. Uh, oil giant Shell announced Thursday that they would relax 2030 emissions reduction target 
uh, 20%, between 15 and 20% while scrapping its 2035 target. And they're going back um, to oil and gas and they they're following Chevron and uh, Exxon. Unbelievable. Uh, I've never thought I'd see this uh, change. No wonder Biden stepped down and and turned it over to the other guy. I mean, not Biden, um, Kerry, uh, Lurchosaurus Rex. Let's go to Biden's budget. Uh, continued attack on reliable energy and freedom. There's the black hole of uh, money going down the, the drain here. This article requests $7.3 trillion, exactly what Americans should have expected increased spending and here's the part i hate taxes um the inflation reduction act whose green subsidies will likely cost over a trillion and in this article it does say driving up electricity uh energy prices and threaten the grid i'll tell you uh it is absolutely nuts <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, this budget is unbelievable. $7.3 trillion. Um, this is going to put Whoa. us over uh, who I've talked to several financial um, uh, folks. Th this is going to put us over insolvency. On honestly, this is d destined to put the U.S. between bricks, taking away the U.S. dollar. And this, we are going to have so much interest that we're not going to be able to pay it so oh well absolutely i mean i could have told you that i mean we're already to the point where our interest payments are are with with where interest which where like corporate you know all these government floating rate debts are sitting at right now i mean remember we're paying china over there um i mean it's this this is exactly what you expect this is going to expand the american climate cores which is i mean listen to this this is how scary this sounds we are going to mobilize, here's the quote, mobilize a new diverse generation of more than 20,000 clean energy conservation and climate resilience workers. Oh, yeah, that. that Gen Z in the article. Gen Z in the article. <laughs> Gen Z, love it. Well, we love Gen Z. Oh, yeah, but that's this is buying votes, dude. <laughs> it yeah. is and one way around here's my buying thing. votes. One trillion dollars for twenty thousand employees. Sign me up. Uh, we need to have a consulting arm uh, uh, fired up for energy. I'm, I'm serious. We do. We could, All we right. could, let's go to Pennsylvania governor. Love me some Pennsylvania. They're now the largest exporter of uh, electricity on the East Coast area. And uh, Pennsylvania governor unveils plan to cut greenhouse gases. Mm -hmm. It's guess what it is. It's coal uh, cutting coal uh, plants out, boost renewables and big energy producer. Our buddy, this is governor Josh Shapiro, uh, the plan to fight climate change. Uh, hmm. Uh, he nicknamed Electri Electricity City. His plan will make Pennsylvania competitive in a clean energy economy. It's not going to happen. Here's a quote from him. If they choose to do nothing, they're choosing to be less competitive in an environment that demands us excellence uh, at to the table every day. They're choosing to fall behind if they do nothing. Uh, here is a quote from our buddies over there at the Marcellus Coalition. I love him. I'm trying to find it. I've, I've David been, Callahan. We love David. David. Love David, which represents uh, Pennsylvania enormous natural gas industry. Uh, he says, even when the what the government has proposed is not enough to meet the needs of addressing the climate crisis, it's a huge step forward. P Pennsylvania is now. Oh, this is from Alex uh, Baumstein. Exactly. I was going to say that's not from Dave. Oh no! Here, let me get you. Uh, Dave's um, said uh, uh, represents Pennsylvania's enormous natural gas. Uh, the most pressing challenge is ensuring the grid is stable and reliable, uh, reliable said Dave Callahan. Uh, he's dead on. Right. And you, you know, uh, you sit back and kind of go, 
if they did nothing, Michael, and turn down the gas, uh, excuse me, the coal plants and replaced with natural gas plants, they would save and cost a kilowatt per hour to all consumers on the, uh, as, as far as they could export energy. They have the opportunity to yep. make a bunch of tax revenue. No, this they energy do. tax they, is just they they really do. Them. And I mean, I'm all for shutting down coal plants and retrofitting them and moving into natural gas. The problem is that's not quite what's going on here. It's a let's shut down coal and let's try to bring in wind and solar because you know the fact that you know. Uh, you know, what's hilarious is Scranton, Pennsylvania is nicknamed the electric city. Is that from the office or is that because they're actually <laughs> producing electricity? We remember, you know, any office fan will remember I, the electric I, I recognize city. Scranton and I, I didn't even associate it with the office. I love the the office series. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I don't I, I you know, we can't be so sure about that. You just have to remember 60 percent of the state's electricity comes from natural gas. Okay. We have got to move the Energy Newsbeat headquarters to Scranton since this is the electricity, yes. and we could have our own office show. The electric. I'm oh, in. It... <laughs> You're Michael Scott, that's for sure. <laughs> You're. Uh, who was the other uh, sarcastic goofball that had the farm? Oh, oh uh, I'm Dwight. Yeah, great. you're Dwight. All right. <laughs> you're, it's off to you, Michael. <laughs> All right. Um. Well, we'll go ahead and move uh, into oil prices. Before we do that, guys, we'll pay the bills. As always, this um, the news and analysis you just heard is brought to you by the world's greatest website, www.energynewsbeat.com, the best place for all of your energy and oil and gas news. Stu and the team do a tremendous job making sure that website stays up to speed. Everything you need to know to be the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy business. Hit the description below. All of the news links, all the different articles, timestamps. You can jump around, go back to hear about, you know, dive into more about Biden's budget, all that stuff. Um, you can also check out dashboard.energynewsbeat.com, the best place for your data energy news combo. We're really working on some cool stuff there. So get that while you still can. There's also a survey, if you don't mind hitting the link below uh, in the description below and go ahead and fill that out. We really appreciate your feedback over there. Um, as always, guys, just check us out, www.energynewsbeat.com. Um, in terms of, of oil prices, I mean, for the week, we actually had a really great week. Um, we were 3% higher week over week for oil prices, finishing somewhere around um, 8104 is where WTI closed, set to open here shortly at about fairly flat $81. We did see Brent oil above $85 um, in that case. You know, really, you know, in on Friday specifically, we had a little bit of a, a, a choppy day, but there is, you know, really there is some, you know, there there's some sentiment out there right now that supplies are getting a little bit, uh, a li uh, getting a little bit tight. The quote from, you know, Phil Flynn over at Price Futures Group, prices are at a risk going higher. And again, he notes that specific supply um, cutting specifically, um, you know, for this potential cut in interest rates, which is coming up, you know, there, I think the issue is inflation is still above 2%. So if a lot of your thesis on where prices are going to go from here is based upon some sort of relaxing of those interest rates, good luck because we saw some not great economic data come out over the last two weeks that I think keep that, that, that is going to keep the fed from most likely cutting as much as they want. Remember they had a couple rate cuts. I think it was four rate cuts or three rate cuts already priced into the market this year. If it's only two, what does that mean? And that means everything gets pulled back a little bit. We do still see um, all time, you know, very close to all time highs. S and P five hundreds up above five thousand uh, one hundred. Nasdaq, even though it didn't have a great week, is is still booming. Natural gas still struggling. One dollar and sixty six cents for that spot price. Um, and 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 this is what I found hilarious. Okay, Stu. So on Friday we saw rig counts. Um, rig counts actually jumped overall in the United States. We saw seven, an increase of seven rigs week over week um, from um, uh, what we were last week. Six oil rigs, one gas rig, Stu. One company. We're one company is picking up a gas rig. Now I always like to say, who knows? You know, you lay. I have to do some more investigation. Who is this company? 
they they should be if if they should be tried for high crimes high crimes against the economic state because it's unbelievable so you can't make money at these prices you can't and what the crazy part is and it's not and it's not that you're it's it's not that you're what am I going to say? It's not that you're keeping a rig active. We've seen we if if you're Chesapeake, if you're Southwestern, if you're one of these big companies, it behooves you to keep at least a rig running. But nobody's picking up rigs. Picking up a rig right now. Woo. Uh, I can <clears throat> excuse me. I could see how they do that. <clears throat> if the lease uh, has a contract to say if you're not drilling by X number of days. Uh, I've even seen, I better hope run. I bet you better hope it's a drill clause in the lease. You, uh, you better hope it, it even happens. that, that sucks. You, uh, you, you a, maybe let a the lease rig, go. A, a, no, a rig going out could save a lot of money, uh, depending on the size of the lease. Okay. I now, know, <laughs> I, 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 I'm just saying I, I'm, I look more Three, at Thanks Tony Sanchez. Thank you. I look more at, at, at total financial of the package. When you and I did the deal eval of the oxy, you were you were throwing that bad dog out. And I I kind of said there might be more to it, and we found a couple of reasons why. Right? I don't no, have to agree. I'm, I'm with you. I just I to, yep, let's it, it at a dollar sixty gas, it saves you money to go drill a gas well. That's but, genius. That's genius. But you don't know the full picture of the deal. I just it, 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 there are very few situations, in my opinion, in which adding a gas rig right now is a net economic positive when it all shakes out in the end. So I'm going to be I'm, <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to say you might be right, but I'm a, I got about 90 percent of the scenarios on my side. You got about 10 percent. So I'll take my odds. What's the odds of a 10% uh, conspiracy theory, Michael? And what's the difference of a conspiracy theory? It is now. One... Now it's a conspiracy. <laughs> it's a conspiracy theory. I mean, this could be. A conspiracy. <laughs> yeah. This whoever's picking up this gas rig is a conspiracy that they, they better be listening to conspiracies. <laughs> one week, Michael. That's all it is. <laughs> yeah, it's a difference of one week. All right, what else you got for us? Let's wrap this up. Oh, I'll tell you what, Michael. Uh, there is so much coming around the corner. Uh, the It is going to get weirder and weirder as we get closer to an election. And all I can say is take care of your family <clears throat> and get ready to be able to survive just based off of emergencies, natural disasters, and have a plan for at least some uh, backup generators. I, I, I mean, I'm just trying to say natural disaster, prepare your family. FEMA won't be there. Sponsored I, by FEMA. Uh, sponsored by that FEMA. segment was sponsored by FEMA uh, for all your disaster relief. Hey, Check them out. You, well, do you remember one of our best sponsors that came in on the ads on the podcast? It was the border patrol. You need a job with a border patrol. Go figure yeah, that one out. Yeah, go figure that one. <laughs> All right, guys. With that, we're going to let you get out of here. Start your Monday. Thank you for checking us out. World's greatest podcast, Energy News Beat Podcast. Check us out. YouTube, Blur, uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your Substack. podcasts. The and Energy News Beat on Substack. It's going nuts. Yes, check us out on Substack. Um, we appreciate it, guys. Hope you don't have any too many uh, meetings today, but we hope we made it a little easier. We'll see you guys tomorrow.